Welcome to a video tutorial about how to create a Dan Mountford inspired photograph from using a portrait and a landscape or cityscape. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our portrait. So we're going to go to file, then we're going to go to open, and then we're going to locate our portrait. So if you've just recently saved them, you can find them in your quick access. Otherwise, locate the folder with your portrait and landscape. So here is my portrait. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I unlock the layer. So here's the layer panel over here. So I'm going to click on my padlock to unlock this so that I have access to either removing parts of it or using it to create my Mountford inspired image. The next thing we need to do is we need to add our landscape layer. Now what we need to do is we don't need to open the image, we need to embed the image into a layer inside of our project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Place Embedded, and then I'm going to use my landscape and then I'm going to click place. Now you can see that box which is drawn around our landscape this indicates that we can either resize it or shrink it depending on what we want to do with the image. If I push the enter key this places the landscape down we can still move it using the move tool. If we want to transform it or if we want to alter it again we can use control T. So control T on the keyboard then allows us to manipulate the size of the image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this image so that it's large enough to cover portions of his hair. So I need to go a little bit more until it covers all of his hair. There you go. I'm going to push the Enter key to drop it back down so that it's large enough to fill parts of his hair. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to move this landscape layer underneath our portrait layer. So by clicking and holding down the mouse we're going to move it underneath until we can't see it. It's still there so if we hide our portrait layer the landscape is there so it is there for us to use. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the quick selection tool. I'm going to select his hair. Now it's quite curly so it can be quite tricky but practice makes perfect. So I'm going to go fourth icon down here on the left. I'm going to click and hold my mouse until I can see quick selection tool. The first thing I want to do is make sure that plus is added. This will add to a selection and then I'm going to zoom in until the hair is as large as it can go in the window. I've zoomed in holding the ALT key on the keyboard and using the mouse wheel on the mouse. I'm then going to, with my quick selection tool, I'm going to start clicking on parts of his hair. Now Photoshop will start to pick up portions of his hair. You can see that it knows and understands which part of the hair to pick up clearer the background the easier it is for Photoshop to work. So I'm just going to keep clicking, taking my time. If you ever make a mistake you can hold the Control Z button down and this will engage the undo function. And you can see there most of it is now picked out of our hair. But there's still a few bits down here which I'm not happy with. So we're going to go up to the minus button and I'm going to change the size now to something a little bit smaller and finer. So the minus takes the selection away and I'm going to start clicking around parts that I want, don't want to be included. So you can see I'm taking my time just refining the edges. This is part of his ear so I'm going to take this out and then a few portions around here inside of his hair, this large portion here, until I'm happy with the outline. There are a few bits here but for the purposes we will go with what we have. Oh, 
plus a little bit here. There we go. Right. Now that it's selected, I'm then going to make sure that the portrait layer is selected. I'm going to go to my eraser tool here, click and hold the eraser tool, and I'm going to set my opacity. Now this is where having different opacities affects how much comes through. So I'm going to start off this at 60% and we'll experiment seeing which one works best. I'm going to set the size to something a bit bigger because I've defined my area and I cannot at this point go over any lines. If I try and remove this portion here I can't remove it. The only time it lets me remove it is if I'm inside my layer selected. So I'm just going to remove this part of his head. I'm just clicking and holding down in one go with my eraser tool until I've removed most portions of his hair. Now you can still see the hair coming through. Now it's up to you at this point whether you increase or decrease the opacity depending on the effect you'd like. I'm going to undo so Control Alt Z and I'm going to change my opacity to 70% and I'm going to redo so it's slightly starker around the edges and once I'm happy I'm going to press Control D to deselect and then I can use my move tool making sure that my landscape layer is selected and I can move around my landscape in behind this portion of his cut out depending on what I want to do with it. So I'm going to try and have that tree in the front there with the landscape and the sky to reflect his head. Now I can still see a lot of his hair so let's remove a little bit more of this. I'm going to go my eraser tool, get back on my portrait layer and I'm going to go back over portions of this Oops. Portions of this until I'm happy with the overall effect. If I zoom back out, we can then see that we've got a nice clean area for the hair and the landscape to show through. Experiment with the beard, experiment with different parts, his neck or his face, depending on what you want to do with your Dan Mountford inspired image. Thanks for watching.